Well, what's up, everybody? This is the Chat and Cheese podcast with a special interview with Eileen Kowalski, Global Head of Candidate Experience. I am Joel Cheeseman. This is my co-host, Chad Sowash. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks. I'm excited well, to be here. Should we talk about GM? Yeah, let's talk about there. GM. What, what do you do? It's a long title. <laughs> it's a long title. Uh, so I essentially lead talent acquisition enablement, technology, process, experience, training, governance, compliance, Jeez. coordination, support, logistics, things like wow. that. So all of the pieces that allow talent acquisition to do their job mm -hmm. sit within my team. So big name like GM, mm -hmm. right? Uh, trying to go with AI. I mean, there's a lot of risk and from everything that we've heard in the news. And I mean, you know, everybody says they have AI nowadays. How was that process for you? And why were you looking for AI or were you just had a specific problem that you wanted a solution for? Well, so no, we were not specifically looking for AI. We were, the problem we were trying to solve for was how do we take manual work out of the process, how to become more efficient, mm -hmm. how do we improve the candidate experience? Because at the end of the day, every candidate is also a customer and we wanted everybody, whether they got a job or not, to feel warm and fuzzy after they spoke to somebody at GM about a job. Give us an idea of the scale that we're talking about. Over 100,000 employees, mm -hmm. over 10,000 at least hourly employees per year. Like, give us some context on the scale that you're dealing with, because yeah. I don't think a lot of people appreciate yeah, so sorry, what we're about talking about. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get yeah. to that. Um, and it's interesting because we, we look at talent acquisition a little bit differently. Uh -huh. We only count external hires. So we hire roughly 20,000 external hires into GM every year. Wow. So what were you, were you looking for ways to identify places for efficiency? Were you just looking for a vendor to come in to help you do that? What was the whole process like? So GM is an interesting story because historically there's been 38 um, decentralized systems that don't talk to each other. Talent acquisition Ouch. had basically nothing. Wow. They had an incumbent applicant tracking system, and that was it. And so in 2020, GM implemented Workday, consolidated all those 38 systems into our ERP system. So Workday is it for us now. And then we said, okay, now what? How do we now improve the experience? Because um, while we love Workday, it's it's not always a great experience for a candidate, yeah. especially our blue cloud blue collar demographic. Mm -hmm. It's not really user friendly. And we had to find ways to make it I don't know, more interactive, better experience, really flip the narrative, give the, the candidate the ability to tell us when they're available versus telling them. Um, and also we started looking at like, what are the repetitive uh, administrative tasks that we do over and over and over again mm -hmm. that we have, you know, tons of headcount just pushing buttons or, or, you know, putting things on calendar. And is that the most efficient? And what a horrible existence as it, well, right? As a human being, just hitting buttons off. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What, what kind of percentage are we talking about that don't have a resume that are applying to GM? Is it a, is it a large number or no? It's a, it's a large number. So okay. uh, our production roles, um, which I would say is just in the U.S., probably between twelve and 14,000, mm -hmm. a resume is not required. So they don't have a resume. Most of them don't even have email addresses. Was that they really, a change? Was that a change no, from the no, other process? No, wasn't or? a change. And so it was really hard, right? So if you take a very traditional applicant tracking system mm -hmm. and you say to somebody who is not used to living in that environment, hey, come apply. And they get to a homepage and they're like, I don't know what this is. I don't have an account. What do I do now? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, upload a resume. I don't have a resume. What do I do now? Right. And so we lost a lot of candidates on the front end of the process, which is why, um, you know, some of the Paradox products were really enticing. So what did the data process. sell you in terms of uh, <laughs> the benefits of the candidate experience? Did they more applies, more percentage? Well, of, so of it's interesting, apply? right? Because we knew that our big drop-offs, especially for the blue collar roles, mm -hmm. for our production roles, our big drop-offs were application, um, accepting an offer. They really struggled accepting an offer mm. and they struggled with onboarding. Um, and so we're, we're getting ready to go live. We'll go live in early Q3 with some automation, right? So this conversational uh, chat to apply experience where the worker will, I don't know, maybe see an ad on, um, you know, 
in a, in a diner or mm -hmm. see something on Instagram or Facebook, right? And just chat, uh, text a, a number to a chat mm -hmm. and experience Evie, who's our virtual assistant. Clever. Do you get it? I see what you did. Yeah. You see, that? I see what you did. There. Yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it wasn't my idea. I can't take credit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, um, you know, the the uh, the applicant will experience this conversation mm -hmm. to to join GM. So th that's not where you didn't start with blue collar, though, right? We didn't start with where, blue collar. Where did you start, and then how did it, how did that whole journey yeah. end up today? <laughs> it's a journey. Yeah. It's a journey. We started with uh, interview scheduling. Okay. So inter fo fo interview and phone screen scheduling okay. were a nightmare. Our oh, recruiters God. had to schedule all their own phone screens globally. And so that's no. if you've... Wow, come yeah, on. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> they did it themselves. And so it was, it was really painful. A lot of them were working at night because they were looking at, you know, talking to candidates during the day and they would review resumes at night. They were taking time away from their families. And uh, the very first thing we went live with was phone screen scheduling. And I vividly remember, I don't know, it was probably the first week we went live. Mm -hmm. One of the recruiters reached out to someone on my team and was like, I literally stepped away to make dinner for my kids for 45 minutes and I came back and I had like 30 phone screens on my calendar for the week. <laughs> and it was the most amazing thing. I am all in, I'm 100% in. It took it literally like instant, right? The recruiters were instantly in love with this, with this concept. So they were doing work at night at home. Mm -hmm. Kids at home, homework, feeding the dinner, kids and whatnot. So normally would they do that manually while that was happening? Yeah, they would do that manually. So we went live um, initially with phone screen for experienced because there's no interview for our, our hourly population. Um, and then we went live a couple months later with interview scheduling. So what happened there? Um, today it's amazing. Yeah. We went live. It was it was not so amazing. Wow. Um, change management is hard. Change is really hard. Yes. GM is a heritage company. Mm -hmm. Hard they for who? Change is hard within organizations, and especially when you take these long-standing heritage companies that have been around yeah. doing things the same way for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, the communication down to the the impacted population wasn't great. And so the impacted population in this instance were our hiring managers. They had to now manage their calendars, right? And so if, if I'm sure there, every company, right, anyone who would watch this is gonna, this is gonna resonate. The first couple months were really rocky. It took a lot of going back and forth, talking to hire, to leaders, talking to HR business partners, yeah. helping them understand mm -hmm. the importance of the tool so that they can help us kind of insert change. Um, and so I tell this story a lot, and then the biggest lesson learned that I learned from this uh -huh. was that the change management should have started the day the contract was signed, and it was not. So was this an expectation management that this is going to happen? What was the, the, the switch that was flipped that changed everybody and everybody just got on board? We, um, so part of Part of the business case was, well, if we're gonna automate this, we don't need as many coordinators mm -hmm. scheduling, mm -hmm. right? So that's all our coordinators did at the time was schedule interviews manually. And uh, it finally came to the point where we said, okay, it's six months, we're drawing a line in the sand. We are gonna downsize that team. Uh, and so, you know, everyone started getting on board a little bit because that to. that resource went away We're but it was yourself, painful right? it was painful change so today how's, today, how's today today we are at our goal our goal was 80 percent of our interviews should be scheduled automatically and we allow uh, a small team to support about 20 percent where there's nuances or flexibility uh, you know the, that has to happen maybe it's travel mm -hmm. and the candidate needs some logistics and obviously our virtual assistant can't book a plane ticket for somebody, so uh, unfortunately.